Welcome back to our online course on non-communicable diseases prevention and control. This is now part two of the introduction series where we look at definitions of NCDs. And I'm talking about definitions instead of definition because actually I will show you in the following couple of slides a couple of different ways on how to define NCDs. So let's get started. Now the learning objectives of this part are that you should be at the end of the session be able to describe the key characteristics of NCDs, of course to define them as well and have a good understanding about the differences but also about the commonalities between NCDs and CDs and with CDs you can imagine I mean communicable diseases. Let's start with the definitions. Now here I found one definition and I'm sorry for the blurriness of those photos but you can imagine what they show. One definition of NCDs um, or lifestyle or chronic diseases which said diseases caused by lifestyle choices, genetics and or environment and not communicable. And I start up with that definition to show you a bad example because I have the feeling that about anything and everything can fall into such a definition. Infectious diseases um, equally in the first part, um, but then being not communicable at the f uh, second part. And what is not linked to genetics and or the environment. So we need to do better than that. And the other thing I personally object very much is the term lifestyle, lifestyle choices. As if this is the predominant cause of NCDs. And of course, I'll show some bizarre examples there in the middle and on the right, this, this uh, uh, records a smoker and um, in the middle this this hamburger eater. Um, yeah, you can say this is their choice of doing it actually. But if you look at the left side of that picture of, of morbid obesity, well, can we only say, can we say that this only lifestyle choice or shouldn't we look at other causes? So therefore, the term lifestyle choice seems to be exclusively blaming the individual and maybe too narrow as I show you in some other um, examples and in the presentations. Now here the first definition in the literature I put forward, um, NCDs, is a disease that has a prolonged course that does not resolve spontaneously and for which a complete cure is rarely achieved. And that you can find on the website below. And let's, let's go there um, quickly. Well, quickly is different. Here we go. Um, so that happened to be the website of the Minnesota Department of Health where they say that chronic diseases have been referred to as chronic illnesses, non-communal diseases and degenerative diseases. So they actually put NCDs together with chronic diseases and degenerative diseases. And then they list down here what they mean a list which might be quite different from what you thought NCDs were. We'll come back to that. That's one definition and it's actually coming from an article I looked, looked around, uh, around McKenna et al. and Copeland was part of it in 98. The reason why I'm not too satisfied with this definition is that think about chronic infectious diseases, tuberculosis. A disease that has a prolonged course, yeah, that does not resolve spontaneously, certainly, tuberculosis won't, and for which a complete cure is rarely achieved. Well, in tuberculosis we hope that we do achieve it, and there are good, good treatments, but now let's think about HIV, HIV AIDS. Prolonged course, 
does not resolve spontaneously and for which a complete cure is rarely achieved. So this definition is better than what was before but still not where I want to have it. Let's go to the next one. All right. What are chronic diseases? I found another source on the, the internet saying chronic diseases are non-communicable diseases, illnesses, sorry, that are prolonged in duration, do not resolve spontaneously and are rarely cured completely. Now this definition is a little bit better, I think, and let's look, look up the source. The source is the CDC um, and on their website where they have actually a chronic um, disease publication. We're getting to it in a second. Especially here we go. If the internet is a fast enough, that is a very good resource. The Chronic Disease Prevention and Health Promotion website of the CDC, CDCs, the Centers of Disease Control, where you find um, a lot of material on NCDs and they also spell out, of course, for the US, um, a couple of statistics and showing that NCDs and their risk factors are predominantly determining the health or health burden in the US. Now what can I say if we go back to the definition, what can I say about the definition? Chronic illnesses, chronic diseases are non-community illnesses that are prolonged in duration, do not resolve spontaneously and are rarely cured completely. Um, if you read that to, let's say, your father, your partner, um, you still don't quite know what they are. It's very, very generic. Let's see what we have as next definition. All right, I actually uh, end up having to make up my own definition about NCDs. We also say NCDs are chronic conditions that do not result from an acute infectious process and hence are generally not communicable. And then I explain furthermore, these conditions cause premature morbidity, dysfunction and reduced quality of life. They usually develop and progress over long periods, often initially insidious, and once manifested there is usually a protracted period of impaired health. Again a very descriptive um, definition that's the best at the moment I can come up and I encourage you on the discussion site and later also to put forward if you like your definition. But I actually integrated there and made an emphasis away from, from the others um, the problem of the infectious process and I said they do not result from an acute infectious process. Because actually over the past 20, 30 years, which is sometimes in medicine a very short uh, time span, our understanding what causes, what's, what type of causes are underlying NCDs has been shifted um, and away from the dichotomous classification that they are communicable or infectious diseases and non-communicable. It is a little bit more complex and later you understand why I actually bring up the um, issue of infectious process. Now the word non-communicable diseases is in Peter Peart's opinion but also I shared it with him um, quite unfortunate let's say that, that way. He, he said recently, uh, last year actually in, in London, that anything starting with non in his view is a non-starter. And that was interesting to hear that from her because he, started, he said that when the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine set up a center of global NCD research. And he um, is at the moment the head of the London School. So here we are a little bit stuck with a name, non-communicable diseases, which has several disadvantages 
one of them being this non-issue the second one also being that I have personally difficulties pronouncing it straight so you heard that already and the third one is we come back to that and I alluded already this non-infectious seems not to be fully true anymore this dichotomy um, so here we are and let's get a better understanding what they are that's why I like descriptive uh, definitions and from now on I think we call them NCDs that I can pronounce it much quicker and better and you too I'll put forward also this issue of an um, a focused a smaller and an extended definition and with that I mean that if you look at the different definitions and remember the website before from the uh, Minnesota Health Department then sometimes within the NCDs are included chronic mental diseases and also injuries especially um, those who have a prolonged convalescence and impaired um, a function with them S and whereas currently WHO is not including them in the definition of NCDs they are always talking about NCDs and mental health this is not only an academic distinction should they be included or not but it's very important if you want to compare NCD statistics between different um, agencies, uh, re reports from agencies, if the CDC reports, if the Minnesota Health Department reports, if WHO reports or so, um, to make sure that they are actually reporting on the same thing. So you have to actually drill down to find out what is included and what's not. Now let's talk about the characteristics of NCD. And I've got a whole list here well, they have a complex etiology, complex causes, and we have a whole session about the causes. They have certainly multiple risk factors and not only one. A long latency period, meaning a long non-symptomatic phase before disease occurs. They're generally, with a few notable exceptions, n of non-infectious origin have certainly a prolonged course of illness. People don't die immediately unless it's a fatal stroke or fatal heart attack. They, if people don't die immediately, then they lead to functional impairments or disability and generally are seen as incurable. Let's look at the types of NCDs most noted and most frequent are the cardiovascular diseases, coronary heart disease, stroke are included, and cancer are on the list, chronic obstructive lung disease and diabetes. But the list doesn't stop there, it can continue to include chronic neurologic disorders as we saw on some definitions, arthritis, muscular skeletal diseases or dent degenerative diseases we saw on one definition um, mental health injury etc etc another approach to define NCDs would be to classify them or classify any disease according to their etiology or to their cause or as an alternative as through their impact on the health system let me show you what I mean. But so far all the definitions basically used a mix of both, but focusing originally very strong on etiology. Now on the next slide it actually makes sense what I'm talking about. If you look at the cause of the disease etiology, then you have this classic dichotomous world of communicable diseases and non-communal diseases and as we had before NCDs are then defined as chronic causes chronic diseases which do not have a biological agent as their cause and we already highlighted that this might be a problem 
Now, if you look at the other way, how to classify diseases through their impact on the health system or impact on people. So if you ask health system researchers to classify diseases, then they look at their chronicity. They say diseases are either acute or chronic. And the difference between them is actually here, a three months period, an arbitrary selection of the time point of three months, saying anything which occurs and subsidized within the three months is acute, and anything which has symptoms and consequences longer than three months is chronic. Very easy. So basically now, the disease classification becomes a two by two grid. We have the acute diseases and the chronic and those two columns and the rows would be the communicable diseases here and the NCDs on the bottom. Now let's try to find examples to fill each cell and let's start with the acute ones. Acute communicable diseases, which is actually the majority of CDs in the acute upper cell here, are those ones um, where we, as the definition says, the symptoms occur and subsidize, sub, subsides within three months. Examples is the common cold, the flu, chickenpox, measles, mumps, etc. etc. Acute NCDs is rather almost an academic play. There are not many. There could be appendicitis because you hope that within three months that's all done and over. Actually it's also cured, um, so it's, it's sort of an exception. Acute alcohol intoxication, which might also be cured or so, but turning into a chronic condition or complications, drug overdose, sprained ankle, all non-communicable but acute conditions. Those are not the ones you think first when talking about NCDs, but what you think first when talking about NCDs is here on the chronic side, the cell for instance. So chronic NCDs or here I flick in living conditions related diseases include the classic ones as we had before hypertension, arthritis, cancer, heart disease, diabetes but many many other more. Now chronic communicable diseases are those taking longer than three months and that includes HIV AIDS, tuberculosis, herpes virus, infection, syphilis, etc. etc. So we have also on the communicable diseases a number of examples which are chronic. Now let me come back to something I haven't highlighted too much but it's actually included on those slides if you realize and that's this one. Could there be an overlap between communicable diseases and NCDs? Or could there be also an overlap on this side between acute and chronic? Let me give you first an example of an overlap on this axis between acute and chronic that could be in conditions like asthma. Asthma is a chronic NCD with acute attacks. The other example would be coronary heart disease as a chronic disease with an acute um, heart attack or or mini strokes or things like that. Now what about the overlap between those two axes CDs and NCDs? I have to highlight and come back that we are always saying that virtually all chronic diseases have multifactorial etiologies. So that means 
some or many, depends what you read, where you, to whom you talk, may have actually infectious components included in their causes. And here's a list of infectious bacteria, viruses, and things like that, and associated classic NCDs. Some lines I should rather put with a with a question mark, they are hypotheses of involvement, not a proof, but in other lines I should mark it very clear and thick because now we have to prove that the human papillomavirus is the cause of cervical cancer. So since a couple of 10, 20 years, we actually know that some of our so-called non-communicable diseases actually have an infectious origin. And that, as I highlighted before, makes this terminology a bit outdated. So is there something I'm not telling you about the infectiousness of the condition, the chronic NCD? this man has? No, I told you everything that this classification has its limits. Um, out of historical reasons we used this dichotomy, communicable and non-communicable, or acute and chronic, but you have seen that there's some overlap in between. And the easiest way to define things is to actually spell out what conditions you mean are included under NCDs. So, let me summarize this session. NCDs, especially the chronic ones, take time to become fully established and are complex, but not complicated. I have highlighted this in a little bit grayer shade than the other one, because we haven't talked about it. It comes back in other sessions. Um, NCDs often have origins at the younger ages, so long latency time early onset of risk factors lead to that. They require long and systematic care and often expensive approaches to treat. Are the leading causes of death in all regions except in Africa. This is also gray shaded because we haven't gone to that, but we will. Require integration with responses to acute infectious diseases. Well, I'll leave that also in gray because we haven't we haven't talked um, about that either. And offer many opportunities for prevention. And this is the advantage of conditions which have a long latency period. We have time to develop and implement programs. If it's the flu with a three-day turnaround time, then it's very difficult to do public health programs. If it's diabetes, if it's obesity, if it's cancer, many cancers, not all, we have better chances to make a real impact in prevention. And that's the ultimate goal of our course. Now, this is the last slide, only as a hint as at an activity we will have on Epsilon, and that is about eight myth about chronic diseases, a list of myth, and a myth is always a bit half true and half wrong. And the activity is about that you should select one and write an argument for it and an argument against it, dispelling or busting the myth. But this we all do on Epsilon. And this is the end of the second part of the introduction.